lot of people see my videos and they say, you know, I'm gonna have to keep waiting until I have some extra money. I don't have enough money to get started. Or other people just come to me and they say, how much money do I need to get started in this? My answer is always the same. The amount is up to you. My name is Chris Noggle and I'm here to help you create your own bank. So when you ask me how much money you need to get started, let's go into the things that really matter with that. The first thing you should understand is you should know and understand what you're gonna use the policy for. So if you're gonna start in the infinite banking concept and you're gonna start one of these policies, why are you starting it? What is it that you want to do with the policy? Because it's not the whole life policy that's gonna do it for you. I mean, if you're content making five to 6% on your money, then our conversation isn't gonna be a good one because that's not what we do. We wanna put the money in the policy and then move that money back out to make money a second time. The infinite banking concept is simply taking back the banking functions in your life. The late R. Nelson Nash pioneered this idea and that was his idea. It's about the process, not the product. But in order to do the process, you do need the product. So let's get into what does it take to get started? The most important part you need to understand is not much. How old are you? So let me just use myself as an example. I'm 45 years old. So in order for me, if today was the day I was starting a policy and I wanted to know the minimum amount, I'm 45, all I do is add a zero to my age. That's 450. 450 a month is my minimum. So if you're watching and you're 60, $600 a month. If you're 20, $200 a month. That's the minimum. But the minimum is the minimum, okay? It doesn't mean that's the max. The max amount you can put in is really up to you as well. You wanna put $2 million in like my client last week did? Great, put two million in. Or you can put the minimum amount in. But a lot of people simply put off the inevitable and they say, oh, I'm just gonna wait till I have more. Let me tell you my story. When I first started this, I hardly had anything. I was going through an incredibly difficult time in my life. I had no extra money. So my first policy, and sometimes I'm embarrassed, but I shouldn't be embarrassed to say this, I started my first policy with about $240 a month. That was actually under the minimum, because I was older than that, I was in my 30s when I started my first IBC policy. Now I'm not suggesting you do that, because the minimum should always be 10 times your age, but I'm simply saying I was unwilling to wait. The time is always now, I wanted to start now, and I did. That first policy might not be the best policy I've ever created because it didn't have enough juice going into it, enough money going into it, but I at least took action and got started. That same policy that I started way back when has been used over and over and over again. It's been used to pay down debt. It's been used to finance cars. It's been used in everything that I do with the infinite banking concept because it's part of my banking system, which now is comprised of nine different policies. That's right, nine. It's not that I wanted nine, but the evolution of all banking starts the same. Just look at a regular traditional bank. Where do they start? With one location. And then what happens over time? That one location turns into two, turns into three, turns into five. And then pretty soon on every single corner in your town, there's a branch office. Why? Well, because one branch office can only get so much money in deposits from that particular area. So they open another one in another area, which then makes it convenient for that neighborhood and another and another and another. And banks make money not by allowing you to deposit money, but by then making your money go to work for you. By then making your money that you deposited go to work for them. So what we should do with this is start our banking system. And you always start with the first one. And the first one should always start with what is the amount of money you're saving today? Well, if the minimum is the amount you're saving or the amount you can save, then go there. But if you're saving more than the minimum, well then change where that money goes and start with that. So we're never gonna tell you how much to start with. People all the time, well, how much should I start with? Well, I don't know, how much are you saving? Where's your money going? How much you putting in a 401k? How much money are you keeping in a savings account? How much money are you putting in that checking account every month that isn't going out to pay for bills? That's the amount you start with. So. When people ask me that, the answer is always the same. Add a zero to the end of your age and that's your minimum monthly that you should start with. Let's go back to my story about that banking system. A lot of people think it's a race. Like they hear me say I have nine, they hear you know, my mentor Brent say he's got 29 and they think, oh, I gotta get as many as I can. So a lot of people will come to us and say, well, should I start two instead of one? As if having more is better than just having one, no. 
If I could go back and have just one banking policy, that's all I would have. But that's just not the way things work in life. As life goes on, we get smarter. We more, work more efficiently, our dreams and our businesses start to grow, and then we make more money. But it, it's a marathon, it takes time. You heard my story, $240 was my first one. My next one was like 560, then I think 600 and something, and then from there it just went north. Now I have nine, and that nine won't be the most. I'll have 10 and 11 and 12, but I don't add policies just to say I have more. Here's how it works. Remember the example I gave you of this system. Every banking system gives you the ability to put more money through your bank. So if I start my policy with my minimum, $450 a month, that's the most I can ever put into that policy. I can never exceed that because of IRS rules called the max seven pay. So if I'm doing $450 a month, and then next year I make more money, now I wanna do 1,000 a month. I can't put 1,000 a month into a policy that was designed to hold 450. So that means I gotta start a second policy. And then as time goes by, if your income doesn't increase fast enough to keep adding a policy a year, the next part is way more fun. This is the second law of wealth. Your money must work for you. So every dollar I put into the policy, let's use $450 a month, I'm putting that money in. Over the course of a year, I've accumulated several thousand dollars. But that money isn't just gonna sit in the policy. I'm gonna take that money out, I'm gonna take it as a loan, and I'm gonna make that money go to work for me. Let's just say I then pay off a credit card, okay? That credit card that I don't have to pay anymore was $100 a month at 20% interest. So now I no longer owe Visa $100 a month, but I took a loan from my bank to pay Visa off, so now I'm gonna pay that $100 a month back to my policy as a loan repayment, meaning every month I have an extra $100. That's the equivalent of me making 20% because I recaptured 20% I was giving away. So as I do that, as my money works, now I've got an extra 100 a month. Then I redeploy the money out the next year and I pay off another one. And maybe that one's $200 a month. So now I have an extra $300 a month plus the 450 coming over. And I didn't have to work harder for this money. The first 450 was just the amount that I was saving. I was already used to that. The other 300 that I just mentioned was money that I was giving away that I took back. And as that goes on and on, that amount builds and builds. But eventually you're gonna exceed the limitations of the policy design you built. $450 a month, you already heard, I'm way more than that now. So that's how I've expanded my banking system because money is working for me instead of me working for money. And the same will happen for you. When you start your policy, you'll never just have one. If you have one, consider that a failure. That means your money never went to work for you. And that does happen, but it only happens because you failed yourself, not because we failed you. Once your money goes to work, it will make more money. And when it makes more money, you'll need more capacity to hold that extra money, which means you will have the second policy, a third, a fourth. Does this make sense? In the comments below right now, for all of you listening to this, tell me how many policies do you have? Do you have one? Do you have none? Do you have 10? I just wanna know. Put that in the chat. So let's just do a quick review of what we've gone over. You know, when people ask me what's the minimum amount they can put in, I, I always start with, let's not talk about the minimum, let's talk about what the money's gonna do for you. What are your needs and goals? Because that's the first thing you need to know and understand. What are you going to use this money for? And what problem is it gonna solve for you? The second thing is the minimum. It's truly 10 times your age, just add a zero to the end of your age, and that's your minimum monthly. It's so simple. But don't start at the minimum if you have the ability to put more in. Start with the amount that you're currently saving today. Because remember, we're just changing one thing and that's where your money goes first. So the amount of money you start with should be the amount you're saving now. And number three, we went over why I have nine policies and how your banking system will expand the same way a traditional bank's branches expand. You are building a banking system. And a banking system is going to include many branch offices. And it's gonna take time for you to build to that. Just like it took me time, it took Brent time, it takes everybody time. So the best time to start is right now. So my question to you, what are you waiting for? If you like this video, check this one out. How I lost $534,000 using the infinite banking concept. If you think that's what really happened, you'll love this video. I didn't really lose 534,000, but I uncover the truth about why you've probably never heard of this concept and why your agents and brokers don't want you to know about this.
So check it out and let me know what you think. We'll see you on the next one.